backstory. It feels like the first time. Feels like the very first time. Welcome back, everyone, to Diving Into DuckTales. So, yes, we are. We have backstory this episode. I know that for a fact. <laughs> Once again, my, my, my powers of, of uh, precognition have served me well. I know at least two of the things I predicted are going to happen in this episode. So we are definitely going to see backstory, particularly of uh, Donald and Della's first adventure with Scrooge. And they're adorable as kids. <laughs> they're so adorable. <laughs> I won't spoil what the other thing is, but yeah, we're going to get... Probably a lot of info dump on this, but I am looking forward to that. That is my jam. I love backstory. <laughs> so, any predictions what you guys think are going to happen? I mean, we've been waiting for this for a while. Like, like they've been hinting that there was going to be a bunch of backstory, you know, mm -hmm. tying in with what's going on right now. Especially the stuff with Val. Um, maybe something about Mrs. Beakley, like something we don't know about. Oh, wait. Well... I don't know if that'll be the focus no. of this episode. No, uh, but I mean, like... Are we going to get, I mean, I, I thought maybe we'd get, like, a hint of it, but since we're talking, like, very first with, like, Della, with, like, Della and Donald, like, that's, I'm trying to, I'm trying to. That would have been well after Scrooge's, like, uh, after his shush yeah. days. Okay, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out the timelines for a second. Like, mm -hmm. if that was before or that was after. I'm pretty certain it was, it was before. Okay. Like, well, well <laughs> I don't know, timey, whiny, wibbly, wobbly. <laughs> and you? I think that young Donald's going to sound very different. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering that too, because obviously uh, Rusty Taylor has since passed, and I doubt she would have recorded anything for this ahead of time. So we're definitely going to get a new Donald voice as to how that's going to sound. Anything goes at this point. I'm wondering if it's going to be an imitation of uh, mm. of her uh, triplets voice, or maybe something completely different. Who knows? <laughs> we will find out. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's let's start this uh, journey back in time, shall we? Play. Ah. Ah, starting okay. off with shush. Shh. I've done nothing, Twinkie Tool, nothing. You were trying to blow up Mount Neverest. I was trying to carve my face into Mount Neverest. It <laughs> would have been an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> Typical bad guy. But what about Bunny Rock? Oh! Uh, sure. oh. Mm. Unpredictable shush escapades are costing us millions. A chaotic event occurs. So Bradford was in shush. <laughs> so... And the blink. For another villain to threaten the world, why don't we take over the world? Of course! Wait a second! Hmm. You're saying we gonna go bad like those terrible villains? We simply defeat all who oppose us, rein in any unpredictable factors, and efficiently run the world from the shadows with an iron fist. Yes? Shadow government. Yeah, yeah that sounds like villainy. Request denied. But you have got to get this kooky bad guy stuff out of your crazy little head there. It's not bad guy stuff, you short sent buffoon. It's all right. Shush is a world saving organization, not a world stealing one. It's only a shadow government stuff, I mean. <laughs> pencil accountants know about world domination anyway. Mm. Hey. <laughs> Super Give it a proper title. This is not outlandish super villainy. This is order, control, mm. with your world conquering gusto, focused by my top secret strategic planning, the sky's the limit. And this fine, I'll add the end. <laughs> <laughs> Turn Shush into an evil like shadow government and, uh, and to t secretly take taking over the world. A boss. So basically, like in like in Marvel Avengers, where you have the shadowy people who ha who, who sit in foil of rooms and t take over the rule the world, that kind of thing. I expect that report on the desk by DZ. Time is money, and I have not enough of either. Oh, after you have your daily swim and money count. So I guess this is purely flashback. Like, yeah. Interesting. A meet and greet with the vampire dignitary. A massive inconvenience. Mm. Is this deadly? How about this? <laughs> That's just easily broke. It's just an old time. Ooh, new <laughs> 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 DZ 
dear Scrooge, a giant firecracker exploded under his chair. The little darlings are so playful. <laughs> <laughs> Your sister Hortense. Uncle Scrooge toppled the Colossus of the Nile. He discovered the treasure of the ten avatars. So what crazy fun adventure he do you have today? discovered the avatar? <laughs> I do not adventure. I'm looking at a big room of gold that said different. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I touched this before you got here. Mm -hmm. Hello, Director 22. We located Captain Yellowbeak's ship. You know what this means. So she's director now. Mm -hmm. One of the most our satellites spotted the ship near a phantom island in the Bermuda Trapezoid. Yellowbeak? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit! 
<laughs> oh, hey, it's like uh, at uh, Typhoon Lagoon, mm. the water park in Disney World. Mm. Poor Galavan, how did that shit get there? <laughs> it's stuck in a tree, not on a mountain. And now we Semantics. Thousand bucks. <laughs> Dear. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Double that 
a powerful enemy today. Now that we know who you are, we will tear the world apart to find you. I'm Scrooge McDuck. As long as adventure courses through my veins, he's gonna use the virus. Yes. As far as the ducks know, Bradford Buzzard was never here. He's gone. So basically just like a mind wipe. Now hand over the papyrus or your family joins the rest of his tragic scalawags. What are you writing? Tell me this! Papyrus, I ask that you be lost once more until the rightful heir of Scrooge McDuck can find your final resting place. If you hunt my niece and nephew, no one will find the papyrus again. No! Again? <laughs> well, that was the first time that happened. Yeah, we are actual kid adventurers. What's no, I don't think that was the first time. Yeah, it is. That was the second time. In chronological order, it's the first time she lost her arm. No. I forgot she's a robot arm. That way, I can spend more time adventuring with my heirs. Yeah, we will. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> Your resume is impeccable, and more importantly, you came highly recommended by Director 22, and she doesn't trust anyone. So let's get to it. What I don't have is a level-headed ally to take control of the duck enterprises. Someone trustworthy, reliable. Hmm. There's something about you. Hmm. I remember you. My Christmas party, ages ago. Oh, I'll find <laughs> the old Kenny. Congratulations, Bradford. You're my new CFO. This mm -hmm. looks like the start of a beautiful friendship. Mm. <laughs> All right. Mm. Um. So I have questions. Yeah, me too. But you ask yours first. Yeah. Very much confused on where the you know where it takes place chronologically. I'm obviously <laughs> it, it it seems like you know the very first scene is before the confidential case files of Agent 22, seeing as yes. they were mentioning Foul, and that was before Scrooge joined up, so obviously it has to be that way. It, yes. No, it's not, because she has a robot arm. No, because uh, remember when they, uh, in the confidential case files of uh, Agent 22, when they first show uh, the flashback with uh, uh, 22 and uh, Scrooge meeting, they mention Foul. Yeah, they meant yeah, yeah. Foul was already. How I, can they mention Foul if it doesn't exist, exist yet? yet? I think this takes place through a period of time. I yeah. think I could like, I think I could sort this. The beginning scene that we saw that takes place. That was first. before That was before Confidential Case the, Files. That was yeah. before Confident then comes Confidential Case Files. Mm -hmm. And then comes the, first, the rest of the episode. Then comes yeah. the rest of the episode. Although there is a bit of a thing with the uh, the Christmas party that they mentioned, is that the one from last Christmas? Or is this a different party? I think it's because, a different I think yeah, it's a different one. Because it, it would have to be given that when um what you call it, when they meet up with uh Del young Donald and uh, Della with Dewey and they mention that they've been through a lot of like stuff before, it's clear that they've been doing this for a while. So I yes. don't think that no, you know, that could have been. Uh, you know, they would have said that if that were at the party where you know they would. They would. Yeah, to. they would have referred to that. But I don't yeah. think it's. A, I think it's a different one because yeah. it's clear from when we did did see that from last Christmas that it w that they've been doing this the parties for some time. Mm -hmm. So I don't think so. Like I know we saw Bradford at like the first party he had at the mansion, like mm -hmm. after he made his first million. So I thought that's what they're referring to. But at the same time, by then. He was his financial advisor, so I don't it's know. confusing. Yeah, that's they, a they, they need up, to Frank. clear that up a little bit. <laughs> Frank Agones, clear that up a bit. <laughs> now, my question is, how old is Scrooge's sister? Because if Scrooge himself is like over a hundred years old or whatever, like, is the rest of his family immortal too? Because, you know, because I, I know they said that Donald and Della descended from his sister Hortense, so I'm thinking, okay, well, one of her 
descendants or whatever was Donald and Della's parents, but, and so was uh, was a Quackmire duck or whatever was you know their father or something. But now they're saying Hortense was actually their mother, and I'm like, how old was she when she had the twins? <laughs> Um, I mean, it's it's hard to say. I wonder if she spent time at uh, Castle McDuck with uh, his parents. <laughs> I know. I'm wondering if his whole, like his parents, his whole family is immortal or something. Mm. <laughs> I mean, given all the shit that he's done over the years to like extend, you know, their youth and whatnot, I guess his sisters got in on it too. So, mm. especially old family heirloom. I don't know. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Mystical heirloom that keeps the, the, duck, the McDuck family around for centuries. <laughs> I, that just like kept bothering me throughout the whole episode because I'm like, these kids are like 10 years old and obviously they're growing up during the 90s based on Donald's look and attitude and everything. So, like, so that means like their mother had them like in the 80s or something. And yet, Scrooge was born in, like, 1860-something, which is theoretically around the time when his sister was born, so she would have been, like, 100-something when the twins were born. <laughs> Again, we go with the wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we explain this. Any questions you had on all this? Me? Oh. Um... I mean, some of the questions were answered, like like with Buzz, like with the uh, Bradford. With yeah. Bradford, I'm just like, wait, how does he not? How does Scrooge not remember? And basically, it's a mind wipe. I'm like, okay. I figured that was the only way that they could get out of that. I don't situation. see why he was there to begin with, to be quite honest. Because like, I get that Fowl was still, you know, they they were still kind of, I guess, growing at that point. Yes, they were very early in its early infancy. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that. Uh, Heron just used her uh, her uh, persuasion to get him to come along. I guess so, but you think he would know better than Chester. You would think. <laughs> that aside, I do like the two of them working together. You have, like, order and chaos in both, like, villainous forms. And it's like, I can't help but like Heron's approach a lot more because, you know, if you're going to be a villain, you should go all out. Like that, because I always love villains that'll just embrace the evil and just, you know, want to make themselves known. On the one other hand, I do like Bradford's more calm, logical approach to everything. Like, well, what if this happens? Or what if that happens? You know, we gotta be smart about this. Normally, I would appreciate that because I appreciate smart villains. However, the fact that he's in such goddamn denial about being a villain is what really, like, puts me off of him. Because it's like, dude. Don't be that guy. Because, like, what was it? One of the reasons I think, uh, that I think so many people, plus myself, hated, uh, uh, Dolores Umbridge from Harry Potter is because she's evil incarnate, but she denies it. And it's, that just ma you, makes you want to hate them all the more because they're not only lying to everyone, but they're lying to themselves. Yeah, but she's in government, so that makes it easy to... <laughs> <laughs> Because they always think they're doing something yeah. good. <laughs> think they're doing, you know, for the greater good. I know. Good. Like, yeah. that kind of was put me off with Magneto, too, because it's like, he's obviously doing evil shit, and granted, he does it on, with, I assume, good intentions, you know, given all the crap he went through in World War II and everything, and the this obvious discrimination of mutants, but at the same time, it's like, he doesn't acknowledge that he's hurting innocent people. So it's like, and he's or like... Or maybe he does, but he just doesn't care. I guess so. Like, I get there are villains who, like, try to justify to themselves that, yeah, I'm doing this for the greater good, I'm doing this to further this goal or something, but it's like, after a certain point, it's like, come on, just embrace the evil, just mm. acknowledge what you are. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I've been theorizing with this episode that Foul is not going to last. When, when we finally get to the end of this storyline, I think Bradford's going to have a, uh, a change of heart, and he's going to disband he's gonna start working with the ducks because he'll figure this has gone on too long and you know he's too much about order to let this go you know to let this turn into chaos yeah i'm thinking either that that's gonna happen or one of other two possibilities either he realizes that you know he actually is a villain and it like literally destroys him mm. in some way because yeah, can't. that could very well happen. That's yeah. another possibility. Or he just loses it and goes insane and just goes full blown mm. super mega ultra evil on everybody. I super mean, super ultra mega death 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's possible he. Can, I mean, it's possible he can, you know, turn around and redeem himself. But I, I feel like the other two might be a more probable outcome because I mean, he's had decades to reflect upon his decisions and this plan he set in motion. And when you're so dedicated to like. You know, having all this order, but not admitting you're evil after a certain point when you realize that the truth, like, how can the human mind comprehend that? Well, I think that's the problem. Nobody's called him out on it. Sharon's called him out the whole goddamn episode. The ducks have since uh, he's, he revealed himself. <laughs> Even so, I don't think they've really made it apparent that... He is indeed a supervillain at this point, and think, he's just dodging and denying. I don't think he's denying it at this point, mm. though. I don't he's th trying I to logic he's, it. Mm. He's trying to logic it. Yeah. He's still trying to logic it. That's what I'm it, saying. He's I, den that's denying it. No. But he's, he's trying to use, uh, you know, leaps in logic to deny it, and nobody's really called him out on that. Nobody's, you know, gone face to face with him and said, hey, you may think you're not, you know, a supervillain, but you are a supervillain. This is supervillainy, and he's, he can't face it. <laughs> and the moon's not a planet, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong! <laughs> oh my god, what if he teams Cause up with enough, Lunaris? Cause, cause that, oh, no, because no, now we have, no, because it's funny, because we have a second villain who kind of denies that he's a yeah. villain. <laughs> That's the thing, though. What if he? What if he ultimately winds up meeting up with Lunaris wherever Lunaris is spinning around? Spin around. The, the only way I see that happening is if, like I said, he goes off the deep end and realizes if he can't make order, he may as well destroy everything. Because think about Lunaris's goal was basically to obliterate the Earth. So that kind of goes out of sync with what Bradford wants, you know, to have order. It's the reason why Fowl now revealed themselves is because of what Lunaris did. It would take something really extreme for him to, like, you know, team up. Mm. But, uh, all the villainy aside. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice origin story for how the twins started uh, adventuring with Scrooge. I'm assuming their parents probably didn't last too much longer, like, after mm. this or something, because... They show that they do live with Scrooge for a yes. period of time, unless they just go for long periods. Mm. I don't know, or maybe it's a slip, like what a with the, the uh, triplets where they all just you know live together. But I'm just saying, you know, their parents are still alive, so it's like, so what happened to them? Do they just ship them off to Scrooge or what? <laughs> I mean, let's face it, Scrooge is better equipped in terms of uh, you know housing. To, uh, to keep family members. Yeah, yeah. true. <laughs> I do like how they're little hellions, even mm -hmm. with their own parents. Again, harking back to, uh, <laughs> to the triplets and how they acted toward Donald. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're describing what they did to their dad, and I'm like, I feel like I saw that in an old Donald cartoon, and I'm pretty certain I did. Mm -hmm. What did you think of uh, Donald's new voice? Uh, at times I was wondering, is that the same voice actress as Lena? <laughs> is it? I don't know, but like there were times where I'm um, just it started it's going to like my a, head. It's kind of like a mix between uh, the original, you know, with the original, you know, mm -hmm. like nephew's voice and I don't want I don't want to say Lena. I almost want to say like Dewey almost, but like it's it's a weird like like it's a kind of like an in between. Like it sounds like the original, but a little more childlike. So I'm assuming it's a younger actor that's doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not bad. Don't no. get me wrong. It's actually more. What's the word? Like it's better able to understand. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I get that's not the the point of Donald. The whole point is that he is hard to understand. Mm. But well, maybe that happens in puberty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, only to Donald. It's only to Donald. progressively <laughs> worse as it goes on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because we've seen other family members. We've seen Della, we've seen uh, Gladstone, we've seen Feathery, and they all have normal voices. <laughs> it's like Donald happened. is just the one standout. Maybe something happened to the adventure that just affected his voice. Mm. <laughs> I kind of want to see that, but I don't know if we're ever going to get to that. Probably not, but it was still fun a funny thought, though. Oh, Donald's first uh, berserker mode. Oh yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and again, because some one of his family members got hurt. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, like, I just a quick note back to the villainy part. I love April Winchell's evil laugh. Hmm. 
Because like when she starts laughing, I'm like, Corella. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, really. <laughs> office supplies! Office supplies for everyone! <laughs> but now there's another question, too, because I feel like uh, this also serves as maybe a start of build-up to uh, the whole secret with uh, Mrs. Beakley. Because by that point, she's now the director of Shush. So, I'm trying to think in terms of, like, the time frame, because somehow, between that point and after Della's disappearance, she gave all that up, and was living with Scrooge as his maid. So we have, like, a time frame now, so I'm just wondering, you know, what that's going to lead up to, like, in terms of, like, what her being the director, like, what that caused. Because we can tell that, like Scrooge, she is not the best judging character, especially when it comes to Bradford, because she personally recommended him, that surprised me, and she's, like, super paranoid. So, I'm just wondering now... He even put off freaking uh, Ludwig von Drake. Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder, is he responsible for von Drake's death? Did they say that von Drake no. died, tragically? No. Well, they it, it's implied he died. I know he's because, di- he yeah. died by the, by the time we got to the, the current the doomsday point. Vault. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, by the time we got to the doomsday vault. But, I mean, he was old back then, mm-hmm. and... I doubt he has the same youth technology or whatever that Scrooge has access to. So he pro- I assumed he just died naturally. They mm. didn't say that he was, like, killed. I'm just saying, because he's the only one that saw Bra- saw through Bradford. It's he, possible. He, if that, that's be, true. That, 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 he would have been a threat. That would be a dark turn for this show. <laughs> that he, mur- he murdered Ludwig. Mm. <laughs> like, damn. He just straight up killed him. <laughs> But, I mean, he was still part of Shush, though, so I'm like, I'm wondering... We don't know when he died exactly, though. It sounds like there's still a lot of, like, like, time points that we still don't know. Like, we got a bunch of stuff here, but there's still, like, a lot we still haven't been able to connect the dots, at least not yet. Right. Because I know, like, he joined Shush when he was younger, and I'm I'm trying to figure out the time frame (laughs) here of everything here. And it was... It wasn't until that until Donald and Della started venturing with Scrooge that he tri- that he started working for him. So that's like a good, I want to say maybe at least a ten year stretch mm. at the very least. It's hard to tell with this yeah. show. <laughs> people that are like characters that are old don't always look mm. it. And then people and, and, travel through time. Yeah, and it just that. throws everything off. <laughs> Space is warped and time is bendable. <laughs> so, any other things you want to add to this? Um, where's Goldie? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying that's to make whole, this. I'm just trying to make this as confusing as possible. <laughs> and then Gearloose shows up. And, ah, what year is it? <laughs> oh God. That would have been that would have been next. But I'm like, all right. So they just I, I just find it interesting. They just went straight with this. They're just like, we're just gonna do a straight up flashback episode. The whole yeah. Thing. There was no setup for that. There was no build up. No payoff. At least not in this episode. So it's just a straight up flashback. And I'm perfectly fine with that, to be no, honest. That's fine. No, that's fine, too. Yeah, because, I mean, it's not like it's not like there was any character that, you know, required, like, a lesson or something. This was just pure backstory, and I assume it was essential, you know, considering what's leading up in, in, the, in the future episodes. But now I'm, uh, now I'm wondering, too, since uh, with the papyrus, was that one of the treasures they're looking for? The one that Isabella Finch was looking for? Part of me... Th- we have to go back to that. Yeah, we gotta go there. It, yeah. We gotta double check yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I don't think it was listed or stated outright, but I'm assuming that's one of the treasures. So that means in a future episode, it's gonna obviously, come into play. Yeah. Yeah. But th- but that's the thing though. It said it only Scrooge's heirs would find it, and he specifically mentioned that the the boys were now his heirs. So it, now it's gonna be up to them to find it. Mm. Would they want to find it? Seriously, that papyrus thing, like, Jesus Christ. Don't get me wrong, I've heard of, like, I've seen many things where, like, a character would try to make a wish and it would backfire the most horrendously way possible. But, like, that thing, I'm like, I, I agree with Bradford. They should have, like, just kept it or maybe even destroyed it. I want to own the world. Here you go. It spins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of fame and fortune. Here's a, a subscription to Fame Magazine. Here's, here's fame. <laughs> fortune <laughs> Magazine <laughs> and Fame. <laughs> Fame starring, <laughs> what's her name? But you were making an anime, the extra. 
making a Warner Brothers reference for in a Disney show. <laughs> we should probably slap ourselves for that. <laughs> okay. That's me. <laughs> I'm more of a Warner Brothers person anyway, but... Depends, <laughs> on what, <Shereta>. <laughs> depends on what mood I'm in. Yeah. I mean, I could like both. I like both. I know, I like both too. Relax. <laughs> Just funny we're referencing that now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what was the next episode? The next episode is The Fight for Castle McDuck. Yes, and I know for a fact we're going back to visit Scrooge's parents. It's like, well, it's what, they, they, they said that the the, uh, the castle reappears once a year, right? Or once every couple of years? I think it's once every couple of years. I think it was every five years. Has five years really passed at this point? Mm, in, this in this timeline, I mean. Or maybe it was like three years or something. It was I could have sworn it was five they, years. Or maybe they used some sort of spell or something to force them to come back early. Because I assume what they're going there for, remember that treasure Scrooge was looking for that... It was Dirty that, dingus. That it was revealed that even his dad didn't know where it was. So I'm one, I'm assuming that's what they're finally going to go look for. I wonder if we'll come across more traps for Donald. <laughs> All I'm thinking of is who's going to be in that episode. I was imagine you have a... Uh... You want me to say it now? You want me to like let you all know? Let's wait uh, until next time. Yeah, let's wait till next yeah, time. I, I looked ahead. I know the character we're going to meet. I know who voices her. And... Everyone at home who knows this will know that that is goddamn hilarious. <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll we'll wait to like talk about that because dear God, the the interaction between the two is gonna be priceless. <laughs> <laughs> so until then, uh, we'll be we'll be heading back to Brigadoon. I mean, uh, Castle McDuck. <laughs> so until then, I'm Cat McBerry. I'm Eric Stoller. I'm Doug McBerry. And be careful what you wish for, folks, because dear God, it will kill you. Unless you well, wish might. Upon, unless you wish upon a star, then, you know. All your dreams come true. Wah, 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 wah.